Russia tackles Turkey in Libya. Now that's my title. And there's going to be, well, we're going to take a little bit of a journey here as we take a little little, little look at uh, Libya, Turkey, and Russia, and the dynamic, what's going on. But before we do that, we're going to get to the meat of the story. And here's the meat of the story. This is from AA.com. Uh, Libya. Russian plane brings Syrian fighters to Serte. Cargo plane arrives in Garda Baya Air Base, an area controlled by Warlord Khalifa Haftar. Warlord Khalifa. You're always good to hear Warlord when you're talking about the place where you live. Hey, where you live? Oh, I live, uh, I live, I live in, you know, you know, that Warlord's place. You never want to say that I live in that Warlord's place. That warlord's place is probably not a secure world to live. Uh, I mean, there are warlords and there are warlords. There's legitimate legitimate warlords like government officials, but this is not a government official, so that's a whole other level. They're, they're, they're not as inclined to care about the long-term consequences of treating human beings like crap as our more polite warlords are. A Russian cargo plane carrying Syrian fighters landed in Syria's Sirte province controlled by warlord warlord Khalifa Haftar, the Libyan army said on Saturday. The aircraft arrived at 11 a.m. local time at the Gardabaya Air Base, according to officials from the CERT and Lufra Operation Department of the Libyan Army. On August 21st, the Libyan government announced a truce and ordered its military to stop operations against Haftar's militia. However, the Libyan Army has since reported several breaches of the sea fire by the militias. Probably by them, too. Uh, Libya has been torn, probably. Libya has been torn by civil war since the ouster of the... This should be changed to... Libya has been torn by civil war since Hillary Clinton came, saw, and he died. They literally, uh, Gaddafi announced, he says, Hey man, I'm thinking of uh, leaving the world currency and kind of uh, developing our banks with our own currency. Oh, he did. Oh, he did. <laughs> and then they were like, you know, um, uh, these uh, people that are rebelling against Gaddafi, you know, we should support them and we should drop bombs and stuff on civilians so that we could support Gaddafi or no, I mean, uh, support the rebels against Gaddafi because it's going to make a place. Uh, that, that was 2011, 2011, nine years later, nine years of horror, uh, uh, dead babies uh, laid at the hands of the feet of the Obama slash Clinton administration. And Libya has now since become one of those places where the powers of the world can test out their toys. So they can test out their toys on the on the bodies of Libyans. And most of these Libyans have no idea the vortex that they've been sucked into, the vehicle of power that they have no choice but to suck into. You're born into this uh, warlord zone with this particular Islam. Guess what? You're that or you're dead. That's the way it works. So you sign up for the vehicle of power. It signs up for you, and you don't survive when it signs up for you. So the GNA, oh, that's, that doesn't matter. I'm going to go for it. Libya rivals hold talks in Morocco. These are all the warlords got together. Delegates from Libya's rival administration have, have, have held talks in Morocco. The talks are meant to help an almost decade of violence that engulfed Libya after the ouster and killing of its longtime ruler, Muammar Gaddafi. After Hillary Clinton came, Saul, and he died. <laughs> cackle, 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 cackle. After the cackler got a hold of the land. After the cackler arrived, the blood flowed. And uh, they were seeing the consequences of of that uh, action by the, uh, you know, the Party of Peace, the Democrat Party, the Party of Peace. Yep. Party of Peace came into Libya, murdered, pillared, pillaged, plundered. Now they have slave labor in Libya, by the way. Now black Africans are being sold by black Africans. Uh, so you got that going on, thanks to Hillary and, and Obama and the whole uh, I came we came we saw and he died and there's a little bit of picture of Libya Libya is a long ancient history part of the Roman Empire at one point got the uh, connections to uh, Carthage which is no more and there's uh, Libya Libya was not Carthage but uh, 
There she is, as you can see, bordering Egypt. Got Chad, Niger, and Sudan, and Algeria. And look at that, look at that. Look at the Mediterranean Sea. And why is Turkey over here? Why is the Turks over here? Why are the Turks over in Libya? Here's Libya's anthem. What's that? Oh my country, oh my country. With my struggle and gladiatorial patience, Drive off enemies' plots and mishaps. Be safe, be safe, be safe. Wow. I didn't know gladiators were patient, so that's new. So there you go. That's Libya. Officially the state of Libya, which is not actually a country right now. It's This is what they're saying is Libya. It's 7 million people. Uh, the largest city is, is, contains 3 million people. Uh, so Tripoli is basically where it's at. That's almost half the country is in one city. So 7 million people are the proving grounds for the new folks to, or, or for the, uh, the power folks to test out their new toys. And they're doing, they're having a lot of fun. I mean, the Libyans are not, the Libyans are dying left and right, but uh, the, the Americans, the Russians, the Turks, Oh, so many. Oh, the Chinese. The Chinese are, are a big player in Libya right now. They're a big factor. The Chinese drones for, and, and Turkish drones versus the Russian drones and the American drones. <sighs> oh, drones for everyone. EU takes East Libya's power broker, Sela, off sanctions blacklist. Ag Aguila Sela is no longer faces travel bans and asset freezes as EU seeks to play key role in any Libya settlement. So they, they're like, this guy looks like he might be a player if we... We got a, you know, no, he's suddenly decent. Leader of a rival parliament. A rival parliament no longer faces evil EU travel bans. So you see some stuff heating up there. There's some, maybe some folks that are interested in seeing this thing end, but I don't think that uh, Turkey wants to see it end. I don't think that China wants to see it end. Maybe Russia. I think Russia might. I think America might, but I don't think Turkey and China are really all that up for it. They're getting a lot of uh, practice in right now. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres on Thursday certified a Turkey-Libya maritime jurisdiction deal that covers parts of the eastern Mediterranean. The agreement has been registered with the Secretary in accordance with Article 102 of the Charter of the United States. Every treaty and every international agreement entered into by any member of the United Nations after the present charter comes into force shall as soon as possible re re be registered with the Secretary and published by it. The pact with Libya's government of national accord that's another, I guess that's another reason why they want to try to establish some sort of legitimate government so they can get this stuff, quote-unquote, resolved. was signed November 27th and passed by Turkey's parliament December 5th. It took its effect December 8th after the two countries published the two countries, the country and the faction. Let's be clear. Published it in their respective official gazettes. Ankara replied to the UN to register the pact December 12th. The Turkey-Libya deal on maritime delimitation has provided a legal framework to prevent any fait accompli by regional states. They're literally trying to protect their interests from anybody that might uh, take it after them. Hey, I'm sorry, Turkey. It doesn't work like that. It might make right in, 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 in ultimately in the battle of nation states. Might make right, but there is no right. That's the ultimate. The the right is is an illusion. Might makes reality, and reality is neither right or wrong. It just is. The agreement also confirmed that Turkey and Libya are maritime neighbors. The delimitation starts from Turkey's southwestern coast of Friday. Okay, whatever. So they made a deal with someone and the united states says yeah we're gonna we're gonna recognize that for reasons not sure why you would award a, a thug nation like turkey which is going around and uh well we'll get to that the turkish military intervention well here you go here's 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 how we, we put the turkish military invention in the second libyan civil war it was a military invention by turkey in support of the un recognized government of national accord uh, they they want to protect their maritime interests because they need ports they need ports in the mediterranean because they intend on actually literally rebuilding the ottoman empire and that is part of the old ottoman empire which we'll get to so so they're in defense of the of the of the un recognized which the un recognized don't mean shit to me i mean the united nations is is basically an organization that is largely created to check the overwhelming power of american might that's if you're an american citizen 
and you favor the United Nations, get the fuck out of this country because you literally are against your neighbors living healthy, happy, safe lives. <laughs> That's how I see it. So uh, uh, let's see here. Military in- intervention was approved by the Grand National Assembly on Turkey, which is just a rubber stamp for Erdogan. He is the de facto uh, dictator. He is the Fuhrer of Turkey, the Turk Reich, I should say. Uh, on 2 January, which passed a one-year mandate to deploy troops to Libya, Turkish milit- military deployments to Libya began on 5 January. Direct Turkish support for the government... Of the National Corps was generally on the ground advisors until air support came through unmanned armed vehicles, drones, aerial vehicles, intelligent operatives, whatever. And uh, so the Turkish military intervention in Libya was mainly interpreted as an attempt to secure access to resources and maritime boundaries in the Eastern Mediterranean. Yes, it's part of its Blue Homeland Doctrine. They got the Blue Homeland Doctrine. Wikipedia does not have an article with this exact name. Oh, well, you don't have an article with this exact name. You do not have an article with this exact name. Blue Homeland Doctrine. That just doesn't seem right. Let's see if we can get us uh, somewhere else. Blue Homeland, the heated politics. Let's check this out. War on the Rocks. Mavi Vatan, or Blue Homeland, has become a common phrase in Turkish political life. It is, most often used, it is most often used as a shorthand expression for Ankara's maritime claims in the eastern Mediterranean. Central to these interests is the presence of large deposits of natural gas. Though. Large, it's a, it's, this is a nation statism. This is, you see a resource, you invent the, uh, the moral constructs to justify that, uh, no, no, it's okay that we kill people to take this. It's okay with thugging or doing whatever we're doing. Now, by the way, I'm, I don't want you to think I'm picking on Turkey. This is the nature of, nas- na- nature of nation statism. I'm just, in this case, it's Turkey that's uh, trying to reassert itself to become a world power. Despite the fact that Turkey is a second-rate, uh, well, it's a second-rate nation, and it's a third-rate army at best. Now, it does have some high-tech capacity but it has no real leadership because not not because turkish people aren't awesome turkish people are awesome i love turkish people got no issue with turks got no issue with turk culture but erdogan is a retard an an objective retard he is he is he is doing so many things that that while they consolidate his power at home also destroy his home it's kind of like the way that I can make sure that I am always going to be the king of my castle is if I burn it to the fucking ground, which is what Erdogan is doing. He is taking out his bestest and brightest because the bestest and the brightest are not idiots and realize what a, what a thug idiot he is and how he's literally turning the entire world against Turkey. I, I mean, the only ally, the only real true ally, world power ally that Turkey has is China. Turkey and China deserve each other because both of them has decided that uh, now is the time for them to be openly and aggressively uh, non-consensual, not even cooperative with the other nation states around them. Overtly. I mean, all nation states are covertly uncooperative. They have to be, otherwise they won't exist. But they've taken it to to, to new levels recently. And then this is, uh, let's see, Turkish drones over Nagorno-Karabakh. There they are. There they are. The Turks are in Nagorno-Karabakh, and they're basically trying to overthrow the Armenians so that they can genocide the Armenians again and take the Armenian lands because that is, they need to take Armenia if they're going to control the uh, the entirety of the uh of, of of the ancient Ottoman Empire. So they're on the move, just like they were in Libya, outstretching their power while they gut it from within. Fascist Erdogan's genocide against Turkish citizens. citizens. Yeah. In July, the Turkish government under President Recep Tayyip Erdogan turned... Hagia Sophia, the most iconic church of the Orthodox Christian world, into a mosque. In August, the historical church of the Holy Savior in Korah was also turned into a mosque. Just doing this all over over again. Culture genocide can be properly defined as the coordinated totality of acts and measures undertaken to destroy the historical culture of nations or ethnic groups through spiritual, national, and cultural destruction or symbolical appropriations of their cultural legacy. 
And that's what he's doing. He is literally following the Nazi program. As a matter of fact, Erdogan is... Uh, is is they they literally borrow from the Nazis. They have studied the Nazis and they use Nazi tactics. They believe in the whole Liebenstrom. Liebenstrom is this idea the Germans had that the the, the for the Volk, the German Volk, the Aryan, the superior race. The Turks believe they're the superior race. By the way, they are the Aryans. They literally do believe the Turks are the superior race, just like the Chinese believe the Han Chinese are the superior race. That's what the Turks and the Chinese have together. They're both fascistic Nazi type. Uh, governments and Erdogan literally believes that the Turks are the superior race and he is literally working to try to secure for the superior race the amount of land uh, that the superior race would need to fully live out the incredible awesomeness of 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 its peoplehood and that Liebenstrom is the old Ottoman Empire now when it comes to Turk Reich thinking it's it's not just the land that they have to take. It's the people on the land that have to die. In order for Liebenstrom to have to take place, it's not just a matter of taking the land and ruling over the people there. No, they got to go because those places, places have to be taken by, by the Turks. And as soon as you get the land, then the Turks get a program of everybody screw each other as much as possible so we can have as much babies to fill the land with the greatness of the superior race. This is Erdogan, by the way. Democrats on the side of the Turks. Not not coincidental. I mean, we live in, in America where we have we have the American traditional right versus the new right. And the new right is the Democrat Party. The Democrat Party is far, far away. As far as Republican right is concerned and the Democrat right, the Democrat right is far and away the most authoritarian right-wing political party in America today. It's not even close. They are over the top. They're Erdogan levels. I can guarantee you that if the Democrats controlled the House, the Senate, the executive, and the judiciary, we would have no Bill of Rights in short order. Our Constitution would be changed to reflect this weird POC, LGBTQ, whatever supremacism garbage they got going on. And uh, they would uh, do the same thing that the Turks, well, they're doing the same things that the Turks are doing. It's just they don't have the, well, that Erdogan is doing. And that is they're purging the land of the quality people, the, the quality leadership. And this isn't purging the land of white men. There's far more than white men that are being taken out by the uh, by the far right left. <laughs> I mean, that is I'm going to let's just call them the far right left because the left has become the far right. So the far right left. So the the far right left, the, the, they're taking out far more than just white men. They're taking out black men. They're taking out uh, Asian transgenders. They're taking out everyone because ultimately it's not really about the color of your skin or your sexuality or even your sexual orientation. Those are the 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 faces that they use to hide behind their their thuggeries it's 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 not really about that it's about orthodoxy orthodoxy which continues to legitimize some sort of priest king authority over the land which erdogan has erdogan has priest king authority erdogan is a, a priest king type of uh cult just like uh china is just like hitler pol pot stalin lenin uh, Franco, <laughs> all all these different uh, folks, uh, psychopaths, that have used some some sort sort of uh, appeal to moral supremacist and in this case, uh, a genetic supremacist uh, claims to justify the murder of your competition. And there you see the world map, and you see. I'll tell you what, let's. Get this bigger for you. Here you see the world map. And you see you see Turkey there. And you see where Turkey is at. And you see where Turkey is involved. Turkey's involved in Iraq. They're involved in uh Lebanon. They're involved in Syria. They're involved right now. Uh, and when I mean involved, I mean they have troops, whatever's that are supporting people who believe that their god gives them permission to murder people who don't worship their god this is who the turks are continuously supporting throughout the region we, we, we support some of these factions too americans and you know i'm 
Uh, I mean, you could rightly point out, what are you criticizing Turkey for? The United States does the same thing. I know, I know, and I wish they'd stop it. But uh, I'm talking about Turkey right now, and the Turk Reich is a whole other level as far as what it's willing to do to the world compared to America right now. I'm not saying America hasn't had its turns and hasn't done hideous things, but right now the United States of America is not so interested in trying to uh, foment unrest throughout the world and support uh, a whole bunch of uh, psychopathic killers that believe in killing people in the name of their God. We only support a small number, tiny number. We don't do it systemically like they do. We only do it when we feel like we don't have a choice. When, usually we do it when we have a ch Our choice is one group of uh, God in the name of God killers versus another in the name of God killers. For the, for the Turks, though, this is, a, this is the Turk wreck. This is a systemic approach to destabilize the whole region in an effort to do this to reassert the Ottoman Empire. And you see where the Ottoman Empire is, and you see where they're influencing. Now, this, you look at where the Ottoman Empire is, and you look at Egypt. Egypt recognizes Israel. Look over here. Look over here. You've got, uh, you're getting into, you're getting into uh, your United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, places like that. I don't know where Bahrain is exactly. I don't know why I can't remember where Bahrain is exactly. Huh. Uh, here we go. What's this? So as you can see, there's a lot of nation states around this area that are very, very, because they know. They know what's going on. They know that the Turk Reich is literally trying to recreate. It is. It absolutely is. I kid you not. And and they, and they And it is following the Nazi ideological methodology of galvanizing their people to support this attempt to murder their neighbors so that they can create Liebenstrom for the superior Turk Reich. And you look at uh, all these nations. Why do you think all these nations are suddenly start to, you know what, maybe we should be friends with Israel. Because Israel is, there, whatever you want to say about it, Israel is a powerful nation. And they're a good ally when you're facing the Turk Reich. These Muslims would rather align with Jews than with the Turk Reich. And these Muslims, by their standards, the Turk Reich is evil. By their okay, I don't know Egypt is 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 is, I don't know the degree to which uh, the fascistic version of Islam is still influencing Egyptian law or not. I know they have some liberalization, certainly more than Saudi Arabia. But Saudi Arabia, that's pretty hideous. You live in Saudi Arabia, you could literally be murdered because you said something bad about their god. You understand how how retarded and psychopathic that is. And that's our ally, and that ally that will kill you for blaspheming their god views Turkey as being dangerous. That's that's what Turkey is. So there you go. The Turk Mike must be destroyed. Not the Turkish people, just the Turk Reich. Just Erdogan and his cronies. Long live the Turkish people. The Turk Reich must be destroyed. And with that, I'm going to bid you adieu. <sighs> I didn't even play music for this one, did I? Or did I? Oh, I played a little. I, I didn't play on this part. That's right. I don't have the music for this part, but that's okay. You guys, have a great rest of the day because, you know, why the heck not?